Alrighty, so let's get cracking. Welcome everybody to this week's iteration of Ticket Training Tuesdays. It's lovely to have you all here. Let's progress forward. So our agenda for today, once again, it's going to be a welcome. A bit of housekeeping, just so we're all familiar with how we can interact and so on and so forth. Um, an introduction into what we're going to be talking about today. As you saw earlier, today's all about attachments. Um, and there's a bit more to, to attachments um, that you might uh, expect at first, so we're going to really dive deep into it. Um, and for our demo, you'll get to see it all in action. And then, of course, at the end, there'll be time for any questions that you may have. So I am James Nurma. I'm a member of the Ticket Help Team. So you may have seen my name floating around some emails or in some calls. And my main concern is just making sure that things are running as smoothly as possible for you. But that is me. Alrighty, so the fun stuff, housekeeping. So firstly, um, interaction. How does that work? Well, please, please feel free to raise your hand and, and even call out when you have a question. Um, don't feel any way about um, putting a halt to the to the flow of things, but because we want to make sure that um, you you have the answers that you need um, when you have them. Don't want it to flow out of your mind. Feedback. Um, feel free to provide feedback by dropping us an email at help at ticket.ai and that way we can know what you'd like to see going forward, any changes that you'd like to make. And also you can see our schedule uh, for upcoming um, Ticket Training Tuesday events. And you can see that also uh, through that link there, which I will put into the chat. And you can also just Google Ticket Training Tuesdays and it will be the first result there as well. It's in the chat also to make things easier. And also when you click into that article, there's links as well um, for each of the uh, sessions. So you can see a recording of them on YouTube, which is, which is great. So let's get into our attachments. So how and where do you add them in ticket well firstly which platforms do they work in well it's across all of them it's in tva and the ticket agent and ms teams so of course it's available to end users and agents uh, you can add them in the web portal and also in the request portal so once again agents and end users and compatibility and also you can add them via email now what does, what does it look like when you add them? What methods can you use? Well, you can just click a button to upload them, or you can insert them if you're using email. Um, lately, we had a release where you can now drag and drop um, them into Teams or into the portals. Um, and in the portals, you can also copy and paste, which is really nice. Um, so if you use the snipping tool, you can just paste something in there, and people will be able to see um, what you're seeing on your screen. So third, visibility. You can control who has access to those attachments on the ticket. So you can make them private, which means that only agents can view them. And also, or you can just leave them as they are, have them public. Anybody that clicks into the ticket can see, including the end user, whatever you prefer. Um, and there's the training session that happened on the 24th of September from Justin that talks about the app mentions. It goes into how these two things coincide and go hand in hand. So I'll paste the link to that into the chat as well. So if you'd like to go deeper into that, feel free to. All right, so that's how and where. Now let's go into the next part. How can you filter them? Well, the key here is in the note is going into the notification center so we've got the link for it there it will be the same for everybody uh, web.ticket.ai settings notification center and in there you'll find a value the file attachment filtering value and you can use that to dismiss files that are too small uh, so the default 
value for that is 25 KB at the minute. Um, but of course, you can alter that however you please. And I'll have some examples for that in the demo as well. And it's important to note that this only applies to tickets generated via email. So it won't apply to attachments that are uploaded in the portal or in Teams. It's only the ones that are sent through via email. So it can really help you to keep things clutter free and get rid of those signatures and, and everything else that you don't need in the ticket. So that's how you filter them. All right, so how can we get creative with them? I've seen a lot of um, these requests come up in, with people sending in emails at help.ticket.ai, which has been really nice to see. So you can add images in knowledge. So they can be sent as responses um, in TPA to end users, which is really nice. Um, you can also embed them in custom forms. So it's similar to the, the knowledge um, a part of things where you can get an image in, as part of a template, uh, which will be really, really cool to see for end users. And also just note a note on compatibility. Got a few queries about this. So a key thing, if you want that image to show up in, in Teams, the way that Teams have it set up with their adaptive cards, the images must be at most 1024 by 1024, and they have to be in PNG, JPEG, or GIF format. Um, so that's from an official Teams um, KB article. So I will put that in the chat as well. I believe that I have that here. If you'd like to read up on that some more, that can give you the limitations that you may have with it in teams so as far as knowledge articles we have our own um help article on this that covers it and i've just got a snippet in the in the slideshow there so these the images that you put in your knowledge articles they have to be hosted somewhere public somewhere that end users have direct access to so in my demo i have a, an image that's just straight from google where anybody can access it and an important thing to note as well is that this excludes SharePoint uh, because SharePoint doesn't allow people to have direct access to those files. So it's an important thing to note there. Alrighty, so now time for our demo, time to see things in action. So let's stop this share. And then we'll go over here. the one we want alrighty so we are here okay so let's talk about adding the attachments whereabouts can we add them so we see the first example here um, in MS Teams so I'm in the ticket app uh, as an agent so I can add attachments here into, onto any tickets that I have I can just click add attachment onto any of the cards and I get that option in my ticket app, which is very nice. And for end users where they live in TVA, they'll have that same option. And they can click into uh, any of the cards there and just add an attachment to their existing tickets. Um, if they don't, if someone, if an end user uh, uses the prompt show my tickets um, and they want to add an attachment to one of them in that list of their most recent tickets and um, if they click on it they'll get that card to pop up and they can add it there but sometimes uh, maybe if it's a, a less recent one it won't be in that in that view so they can just do more tickets uh, they can go to any random one here and they'll get that same option might look slightly different so just do add attachment there and they can pop whatever they want in there so it's very accessible in teams pretty straightforward now let's take a look at how to do it in oops just one important thing to mention not only can you upload in there you can also drag and drop but actually i'll save that for a bit later on when we go into the methods that's not Let's keep that there. Alrighty, so let's take a look at it in the web portal. 
So you can see here, we've got the attachment side of the page on the right hand side. Um, and when you can upload any that you like, uh, let me refresh this page just so it gets itself together. I've been playing around with it for our demo. And so yeah, I deleted that uh, attachment earlier. Was was very surprised to see it. So yeah, you can just add attachments into here, and that will be the same way for the request portal. So let me drag this over. So I'm in my request portal here. That will pop up the same way. Once again, this ticket has had some amendments to it. Let's just see its current form. And yeah, so they'll just have that option here to add attachments to. And then via email, um, in my fellow help team member, Jackson, um, in his ticket training season, ticket, ticket training session, on the email connector, he touched on this um, on how to whoop, lighting, on how to um, insert tickets, uh, insert attachments into emails. So you can just hit insert here and attach the file, but you can also do copy and paste. Um, so here, I simply just did a snippet and just copied and pasted it in there. And when I go into my example that I've got from earlier, that's what I did. I sent it to my email connector and I'll just show you what it looks like in the portal. We got six, seven, actually let's open up 670 here. 670. You see that copy, copied and pasted image. That's just here looks very beautiful nice and seamless so you can either insert it in the email or you can copy and paste it in there as well Alrighty, so those, that's where you can do it and um, just showed you what it looks like across the board and let's go deeper into the methods um, that you use so we touched on the copy and paste in the email so let's take a look at the copy and paste um, in the web portal so if I wanted to copy and paste an image, I should have my other one from earlier. I can just open this message tab here, the comment tab, and paste it in there. And it should pop through. And it's important to note that this copy and paste function um, is only available on the portals and in the email. In MS Teams, it's not available at this present moment. So if we just open this image, you can see my very useful um, screenshot that I've taken earlier, but you can see that works very well in there. And also you can just click upload and you'll get your file explorer opened up. Um, and you can also click and drag any files that you'd like over to the attachments um, box or into this message box down below. Um, it's important. It's important to note that when you drag and drop into the attachments part on the right-hand side, it doesn't have to be expanded. Um, as you can see here, if I get my File Explorer tab, I can just click and drag it over there, and it will work the same way. Um, but when you're clicking and dragging, if you, it's not a thing where that whole right side of the screen will allow you to drag it there as you can see it only allows me to drop the file under that on the attachment box and if i go anywhere else it won't work for me um, so just to make sure that you if you go to, if you want to put it in attachments on the right hand side make sure that you drag it to that box all right so that's how it looks like on the portal um, and it'll be the exact same on the web portal just show you there exact same method um, so go to my quick access drag and drop available to end users as well if that's what they prefer um, so let's go into teams in ms teams oh this lighting in ms teams um you can when I, let's go into add attachment and then and then we can go upload and it'll work the same way. We can click, drag and drop. And we can attach that to the ticket 
if we please. So that works the exact same way. And they also get an update from um, Teams to let them know that that image has been added. Go to the bottom, you can see here, help desk or PNG, that's available. Alrighty, so we've covered that. Um, now let's go into the private versus public. So we'll stay in, in, in Teams. So let's go add another attachment and we'll discuss how we can uh, make it private or public. So we'll go upload. Let's put our help desk one there. Oh, I'm glad that popped up. So an important thing to note, let me see if I can fix this lighting one moment. Um, that's a little, oh, that's much better, much better. So um, a port, an important thing to note that um, since TVA is for the end users, they don't have the ability to um, add private comments. Um, so it won't pop up for them. But if we go to the Ticket Agent app and we go to Add Attachment, I get the opportunity to specify. So as you can see here, Add Internal Attachment. So Agents Only. So if I do that, it will pop up there. I believe that was for, so that's for ticket 667. Let's do it for 665, just so I can show you what it looks like for the end users versus the um, agents. So let's do this one in 665. And then I'll show you in here we have that ticket open so we've added it now when we refresh in the request portal so this is from the end user's perspective they won't see that since they're not an agent but again just so you see that it's not a fluke and then when we go into our um our agent's perspective They'll be able to see it since they're an agent so you can see that little lock symbol there so that's very very handy um, to use there and if you wanted to make something private within the web portal itself um, you could add an image in here let's upload one but another help desk image and you get that same option add internal attachment and you can also see it down here as well. If I just paste an image in there, add internal note. And once again, that works really well with the app mentions as well. Um, so feel free to check out that training session if you missed it. Okay, lovely. So we've got that covered. So now the filtering, um, file attachment filtering. Let's go to the notification center as he spoke about earlier, this is that key value. So we can set a minimum file size before a file is attached to a ticket. And remember, this is only for emails. It won't apply elsewhere. And once again, it specifies it's really helpful in stopping signature graphics from being pulled through and cluttering up the ticket. So I've got mine set to default, but I did some experiments earlier and just so you can see what it looks like. So here I've got my email signature um, and I had I set the file attachment filter value to zero. So the minimum is zero, so everything can come in. And this ticket, let's take a look at that in the portal. I believe Oops, this is in the way. Is that across? on was that six six nine zero kb so as you saw in my email i had my face a little banner and i also put a, a zip file in there it all in there and as you can see from our ticket everything came through all three attachments now when we compare that to 
when I upped that file attachment value to 25, again, same exact email, I sent that through. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, let's go 25KB filter. So here, as you can see, two of the attachments came through. Um, because they, they're not under that minimum of 25, they're both greater than it, so they both came through. But the one that was under 25 KB, my face, that wasn't brought through. That was excluded, nowhere to be found. So it's very, very useful. And if you ever notice that uh, an attachment is missing um, that you wanted, that's the key thing to check. Check the size of the attachment, compare that to the file attachment filtering value, and you may see what's going wrong there. Um, you oftentimes you, may, you might need to raise it uh, and lower it so you can get the perfect value uh, for your environment. So lovely, that's how you can do that. Now let's talk about the creative side of things. So <laughs> big smiley face here. So when we go into our uh, knowledge, um, we have the option to put an image into one of our responses here. So you can see under my hello knowledge article, I've put an image in. So I've just grabbed this image um, from Google and I pasted the URL in here and I added it and I got this image. So once again, this is a public image, so it's come through just fine. And we'll take a look at what that looks like in Teams. So let me double check what my knowledge article responds to cancel all right so it's a simple hello let's say hello to tva and we get a big smile back so really nice to see and it comes through really nicely as well um so that's what you can use for your knowledge um, article and then if we go into the templates into the custom forms once again i've put this smiley face in my new hire template um i've grabbed the url from google once again it is it is a jpeg um so once again it has to be jpeg png or, or gif format and um, the size matches up as well so i've pasted that in there um in our custom form designer you can alter the size you can get creative with it um, and you can also, I saw there was, yeah, to exclude that background, I could even set it to person, but I'll keep it, keep it in there for now. So that's what I've set up. Um, let me go in and see what that one responds to. So simply new hire. Let's chuck that in there. And then we can see our image within my custom form. So it's really nice. If you want to put a logo in there, if you want to put a nice happy image to brighten up your end user, your agent's day, that's available to you. So once again, it's important to look through the Microsoft limitations with adaptive cards. It tells you what you can and can't do. Um, but yeah, you can do you can do most, uh, which is which is very helpful. Um, so I believe that is all that we have. Yes, that is all that we have. So let's get our slide back in here and if anyone has any questions feel free to ask uh james i do have a question mm -hmm. so um, when we were testing this a couple of weeks ago after the new release we found what looked like a bug in in when you were doing a screen clipping and then pasting directly in, because those screen clippings have essentially temporary file names, right? You mm. haven't saved them as a file to your hard drive. So they get assigned a file name as they're being entered into Ticket and being stored in uh, SharePoint. And those file names seem to be coming across as duplicate file names, mm. all you know, image-001.png from the end user's perspective. So if you had multiple attachments pasted in that way to a single ticket, the the end user would kept getting directed back to the same image, even if there were you know four or five different images. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I know that that was something that the product team was working on, and I was just wondering if you have a status update on that. Uh, not at the minute. I don't want to, I don't have one at present. Um, but what I'll do, I'll, I've noted down um, your question about those snippets generating temporary file names and not those not coming through. Um, so are those not vis- visible for, for for anybody when you paste them? Is the person that added them able to see them? or it, what, what we noticed, and again, I haven't looked at this in a couple of weeks, but mm. the, the agents mm-hmm. were able to see four different file names if we had four different images pasted that way. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, on the user end, they were all showing up as the same file name which was okay. all and it was always the same image dash zero zero one dot png yeah and so all of the links in the in the ticket from the user's perspective simply linked to that one name and mm. then i think which, whichever the first one added was that's what the user would see so if there were subsequent images they wouldn't be able to see those subsequent ones even though the the agent from their perspective they could go in and what was happening on the sharepoint end was mm. obviously you know sharepoint can't store duplicate file names within the same folder. Mm -hmm. So SharePoint was appending like a 001002 or something like that on its end. But for whatever reason, those new file names weren't visible to the user. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. Oh, thanks for that explanation. Can understand it a lot clearer. Um, So I'll, I'll pass this over to the um to the product team and then i'll drop you an email um from uh, help at ticket.ai uh, i'll drop you a, a follow-up um and then we'll, we can keep you posted on that i also do some testing as well for you as well thanks for that Thank david you. that's Maurice. um clara i can see you had a question there our security team does not allow public sites for pictures but it would be so useful to have screenshots in kb can you ever see this changing? So this is this this limitation um, is on um, is so so I was let me just read that yeah so I once again this is, would be more of a, a product team um, question so I'm sure that there is um on the feature request page I will put that in to the chat as well there may be an open feature request for this one because yeah. As you say, a lot of people do find it um, very useful, very handy, and everybody's company has a different policy. Um, so I'm sure I've seen a few requests on this before. But what I'll do, I'll pop out our roadmap page, um, and you can have a, a look through there and, and post it on there, um, so you can get a direct response from the product team on it. And also after this meeting, I'll look through the feature request page myself, double check with the team, and then I'll uh, drop you um, an email with um, the latest on that as well uh, and an official response on that too. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll keep you posted on that one, Clara. Thanks for the question. And were there any further questions? Alrighty, so if any do come up, once again, as you can see, our email is here, help at ticket.ai. Feel free to ping them there, and we'll get back to you um, ASAP. I have a question, James. It's Jeff. Hello. Um, it's not for you, though. It's for the audience. Um, those of you following our Training Tuesdays guide will know that there are no more episodes planned. Um, we have taught you everything. Um, we have taught you everything that we can think of that's interesting. So. I would love to hear from somebody for suggestion for next week's session. And it'd be great if that came through, you know, before next Tuesday. Um, So, yeah, please get in touch. Um, Anything that you want to see again, but in a slightly different way or more clarity or more detail, anything that we've forgotten and haven't thought of, please let us know. You can email me, you can email help at ticket.ai. You can put it in the chat now um, and we will do it but um yes please please let me know what what you want to see and we'll make it happen but if you have watched every single episode between the start and now then as far as we can think of you know everything there is to know about ticket um 
and thank you for joining us. And final quick note, if you're joining from UK, like me and James, next week the time shifts because of the daylight savings change in the US versus the UK and this meeting is time zoned in the US. So it shifts to four o'clock next week and then back again the week after. Thanks for that, Jeff. Really helpful. Thank you so much. So once again, just to echo Jeff's words, thank you all for joining um, as much as you have. All those recordings are there, but yeah, we'll keep a lookout for any suggestions that you have. Feel free to send them over to us at help at ticket.ai. We'll keep an eye out for you and we'll, we'll be eagerly anticipating your ideas and we're sure they'll be flowing through shortly. Thank you again so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll catch you next week. Take it easy. Thanks, James. No problem, thank you.